So good morning, everybody. And, uh, you know, it's the end of 21 weeks and we're almost hitting the six month mark. Uh, it seems like yesterday we had our press, first press conference and, uh, you know, it's been 148 days. So uh, to everyone out there doing the right thing, thank you. To all the workers doing the right thing, thank you. And to all the consumers doing the right thing, thank you. Thank you to the workers that have to be there doing their job. As of today, we have 2,328 positive cases of the coronavirus in Albany County, 557 people under mandatory quarantine. We have uh, six positive cases since yesterday, so that's good. We were at 12 yesterday, so we're down six today. Uh, among the positives, we have one healthcare worker, four who have uh, close contact to a positive case, and one they're still tracking down. So uh, out of all the uh, cases we've had since the beginning of March 12th, We've had 42 active cases currently in Albany County. 7,728 people have completed quarantine. Of those, 2,286 tested positive for the virus. One has recovered since yesterday. Um, unfortunately, now we have three people hospitalized. That's up one from yesterday. And uh, with a hospitalization rate of 0.12% and uh, that have tested positive. We still currently have one person in the ICU that's the same as yesterday. Over the last five days, there's been an average of 7.8 new positive cases each day, slightly down from eight from the last, so that's, that's a step in the right direction. Um, as we continue to tell everyone, please, you know, uh, get tested. Uh, they're available. You have UAlbany, you have the Seth Q Arena, you have our uh, drive, drive through at Rite Aid in Colony you have our mobile testing sites. So please, by all means, uh, in Priority One and Gillen, please get out there and do the right thing because um, it helps us. It, it will help uh, us identify if, how f hard it's still hitting the community and uh, where we have to go from here. But you can always call uh, UAlbany at 1-888-364-3065. And uh, for the appointments for the mobile testing through Whitney Young, 518 Four six five four seven seven one. Right aid as always. Just go online, and uh, it's up by one fifty five in Colony and Central Avenue. And the priority one in Gilliland for the antibody testing is area code five one eight eight six seven eight zero four zero. Again, you know, we just got to remind everyone. It's like every day. Uh, just wear your mask. You know, properly cough into your arm, clean your hands, and stay six feet apart. Um, do the right thing, and we'll continue to get through this. So, uh, you know, please, again, just be courtesy to the other people. Um, you know, I have many discussions with people that, you know, don't believe in mask wearing, don't see the purpose of it. Um, I get it. I get it. The world's different. Um, whether it helps, it doesn't help, you know, I'm not going to argue that point. What I'm going to say is it's, it, 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 help, it is helping to stop the spread, and that's what it's about. Um, I'm not going to argue about the science behind it. Uh, you know, I mean, everyone has an opinion, and I respect that. We can agree to disagree on whether or not you should wear a mask or not. Um, I respect that, but respect other people. And if you don't want to wear a mask, just stay away from everyone. That's it. It's simple. Um, I'm not going to argue with people to put a mask on. I'm not going to argue with people um, that don't want to do it. But, you know, I will have that frank discussion, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. Um, so I'm not going to continue to sit there and try to tell you why, but just read, educate yourself, and do the right thing. But one of the other bigger topics we've been dealing with as schools reopening, and uh, we're waiting on the governor through the control room to tell us what they're going to be doing this week by Friday. So it, uh, today is Thursday, right? Yes, I forgot. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what day of the week it is. Um, so tomorrow we're hoping to get the guidelines for the schools, what they're going to look like. But one of the bigger issues have been children with special needs. And uh, we've been on this. And to the parents that sent me Facebook messaging and uh, sent us emails, thank you. Thank you for advocating, just not for your child, but for all children. Um, and we had to continue to do this. So uh, one of the things that, you know, this is a, a batch of area of kids that unfortunately through this uh, epidemic got left out. 
in certain cases and they have continuity and it means a lot to them to have the same environment and sometimes it takes years of therapy to get them to the point where they can get on the school bus they can go to school they can go down the hallway um, they have their routine down so when that's thrown off they don't really understand and as people people that don't have disabilities are, are having a hard time reimagining what the world looks like uh, imagine looking through the lens of a kid that might be have you know on the spectrum might have some issues going on uh, that really can't comprehend why everything is the way it is and uh, you know these kids we owe it to them to give them the best foundation in life that we can to move them forward so just you know our department of children youth and family um, has a preschool center based on programs three to five year olds uh, reopened up since July 13th and we approximately we have 75 kids uh, currently in there now and we do everything from speech OT uh, PT uh, that's based on, on these centers programs our early intervention programs have been assistant infants infants from age birth to three and their families um, since this crisis started we didn't stop we didn't go home and I know a lot of people shut down but we have an obligation as county government that we cannot shut our doors and walk away. We have to continue to do our mission. We have to try to do it differently, uh, follow the safety uh, protocols, because uh, first and foremost, gotta protect our workers. Our, one of our most valuable resources here in the county is our workers and the job they continue to do when everyone else you know, got to stay home, do the right thing and, and be safe. They had to continue to go out there and do these services. So, But our committee on preschool education meetings have occurred through uh, school districts with families via Skype and Zoom. The evaluation team has done the same thing. Now they're starting to do an in-person evaluations, but the same thing as this is continuing on, and it's a little hard uh, to try to do an evaluation through Zoom and different technology, but I have to say they, your department did a great job. I didn't hear any complaints. Parents were happy. Um, you know, but it was different for everyone, trying to do it differently, and especially a kid that needs speech or OT or uh, physical therapy that, you know, it's kind of hard to do it via uh, Zoom or Skype, whatever entrance way we're using. So um, the single point entry has been uh, operational in providing references to support women and families uh, uh, through our mental uh, maternity and infant and child uh, health network which is a collaboration with the health department. So there's a lot of different departments that get involved with this. Uh, DCYF works with the mental health department to uh, a variety of these programs that we run day in and day out. So I thought who better than to have someone that is on the forefront, who's been doing this, who can talk us through this, uh, because again, this is a lot of questions we get. So Gail is the clinical director of children's with special needs and mental health division. So Gail, I thought, who better to have come here to talk about this than the expert who's been doing this. And uh, I can't thank you enough for your passion. I can't thank you enough for caring and doing the right thing and staying safe through this whole thing. So Gail, please. Great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I really wanted to talk about the number of kids that we've still been serving during all of this. Um, our early in intervention team, like um, we stated, was you know serves that infant to three-year-old um, age range. We have service coordinators that have um, currently serving 397 youth in Albany County um, and what their job to do is to coordinate that those children get those services that they qualify for everything from speech physical therapy occupational therapy social work um, as well as special education now um, most of those sessions have uh, for those actual therapies have occurred via um, either a video pl platform or telehealth platform um, but there are a small percentage who have gone back to doing face-to-face -face. and that's really been based a lot on the families and the providers um, comfort levels and ability to adhere to, to safety guidelines because um, that's always what's of utmost importance. Um, our evaluation team has conducted 143 different evaluations this year for both uh, early intervention students and for um, preschool age children. And over 49 of those have actually occurred since May of this year, and it's slowly increasing in the numbers. Um, and we've already talked regarding the preschool special education services and how those meetings are continuing on and have gone back to center-based programming. I did want to highlight the single point of entry and um, providing that phone number for folks as well because 
Um, it's really a great resource because it's really meant to be a centralized referral system to streamline access to services for women, children, and families. Um, and it provides a, a wide variety of information for folks and a great place to start asking questions, especially for a, a very young child. And their phone number is 518-447-7777. Um, and referrals to that really have, um, you know, mid April, I'm saying mid spring through early spring through mid spring, average about 76 a month, or really it's uptick since June, but we're getting about 150 calls per month at this point. And typical referrals are made to such services as community health um, workers through the Department of Health, Healthy Families, um, supports regarding child development, health insurance, health care, pregnancy support, and parenting education, plus more that I know. The list is quite long. But we've seen an increase in a number of referrals um, for such services as food pantries, clothing um, opportunities, infant supplies, and virtual parenting classes, which I thought was very interesting. So I just wanted to put that out there, that that's a resource that folks can um, tap into. And you know we're there to help and provide information. Thank you, Gail. And uh, I know they're probably going to have questions for you. And I want to thank Maura Manning, um, too, for leading the department. And Gail Gohagan, who left us for the state. Gail, we, we do miss you. And thank you for everything you did while you were here. Um, and I can't thank your team enough for what you do day in, day out. It's, it's a hard job that you have to do. And uh, you do it well. So thank you. Dr. Whalen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so. Our numbers are down, and I would say that I believe this is a reflection of uh, adapt adaptation of appropriate infection control practices uh, in New York State. I think that people have been listening to the messages that we have been providing to the public, uh, important messages on how to protect yourself from infection. As we've spoken about, there's a lot going on in the, these two weeks, and dis important considerations and decisions are being made about going back to school, et cetera. We do not live in a risk-free environment, and it's very important when we have these discussions to know that all of our discussions have to be based upon risk. The risk in New York State, because of this concerted effort, has gone down. So decisions are being made um, that may be different then need to be made in other states where there has been less of a concerted effort by the populace to, hip, uh, to participate in these important behaviors. Please know the future is in your hands. So I respectfully will argue wearing masks is appropriate. It is one of the cornerstones to the strategies going forward that will help keep the infection rate low in New York State and across the country. This, these are strategies that are adapted in countries where uh, not just the United States, but other people that have managed to reopen the economy. Um, and they, it is entire, one of the most important things is to wear masks um, because this lowers the infection rate. And this is something that I say based on evidence. I do not uh, create guidelines. I rather review science. I have spent 28 years as a physician and have been trained in scientific method and in reading medical literature. Um, and this is evidence-based. This is an evidence-based strategy and it will help you. It will help your family. It will keep our rates low and it will enable us to move forward in this uncertain environment. Until such time as we get a safe, widely available and effective vaccine for COVID, this is going to be part of the strategies that we need to utilize on a daily basis. Wearing masks, social distancing, avoiding large-scale gatherings, frequent attention to hand hygiene. Every single American needs to educate themselves on appropriate infection control and adapt these practices if we are to move forward. Um, I think that, as I say, in New York State, we've been very lucky with the leadership that we've had and here in the county with the leadership we've, ha we've had, that the messaging has been consistent. And I think that because of that, um, we have, we, we now serve in the country as, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the bright spot where the infection rates have been maintained to be low at this time. 
doesn't mean we're out of the woods. It doesn't mean they can't flare up again. And really, you know, what I would put back to people is that this is entirely dependent on your behavior, what happens next. So thanks very much for continued compliance. I understand it's not easy. I understand there's a lot of inconvenience involved. But the alternative is not where we want to go. Thank you, Liza, as always, in words well spoken. So uh, again, for the people that are having a hard time adjusting to all this, the new world, uh, we have our mental health hotline support available seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the number, as always, is 518-269-6634. And our 24-hour sexual assault hotline, number 518-447-7716. As always, the United Way uh, 211 and the New York State Hotline, the 188-364-3065. Uh, again, please continue to do uh, everything that we've talked about, wearing the mask properly, coughing into your arms, cleaning your hands six feet apart, and uh, we'll get through this.